It's indeed our honor and privilege to have in the studios Dr. Nallathambi Kalai Selvi, the Director General of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and also the Secretary of the Department of uh, Scientific and Industrial Research. It's wonderful to have you in the studios, ma'am. Welcome. And we are talking to you on the occasion of National Science Day. The National Science Day is celebrated on the 28th of February. That is the day on which Sir C. V. Raman, Chandrasekhar Venkat Raman, discovered the Raman effect. And that led to his winning the Nobel Prize. So in India, we celebrate National Science Day because of this on the 28th of February. Please, can you tell us what is the importance of National Science Day. Namaskar Kaushik Ji. First of all, I am extremely happy, excited and delighted to make use of this particular platform by means of which even my thought process will also reach the audience. True. As you rightly said, among all the days, Science Day is so very special to researchers like me because we strongly believe rather than any other tool, if at all you can say one tool that can connect the complete humanity across the globe, I would say, and all researchers would say, it is only science and technology. Because science is universal, mm -hmm. science is common, science will never vary from place to place and technology will also never disappoint you. The concept of National Science Day 2024 is given us indigenized technologies for Viksit Bharat. National Science Day assumes importance in the Indian context, because of an Indian scientist, Dr. Sarsubhi Raman, he just made all of us to get an eye-opening learning. Absolutely. Ma Somebody like Sarsubhi Raman was able to think about yes. all these things mm -hmm. that why is he is giving this blue color? Why mm -hmm. not any other color? Absolutely. This is the origin. The moment mm -hmm. you start thinking why, when, how, what, where, which, mm -hmm. I think you get a new science. Absolutely. That's so wonderfully put, ma'am. You are the Director General of India's uh, premier scientific and industrial research institution that is the CSIR and it has its own history. It's one of the most respected scientific uh, institutions uh, not only in India but uh, all over the world. So ma'am please uh, for the benefit of our listeners can you tell us the role, objectives and achievements of CSIR? I should really thank you for this wonderful question because uh, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research many a times we proudly say we are five years senior to independent India. Wonderful. Meaning is, Wonderful. we got established in the year 1942. 42. India got independence only in 1947. 47. Therefore, we always say we are five years senior to independent <laughs> India. So now coming to CSAR, it's a big family. Uh, we have 37 national laboratories mm -hmm. situated in 25 different states of the country, having several thousands of scientists, technical officers, technical assistants, research scholars, students, project assistants, such a big family. And this 37 laboratories coming under the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, you'll be excited to know mm. the president of CSR Society is none other than our national leadership, the Honorable Prime Minister of the country. True. So the president of CSR Society is the Honorable Prime Minister and the vice president is the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology. Right. Therefore, whatever is getting announced, whatever is getting prioritized by the government of India for the welfare of citizens as well as for Indian industries. All these topics and areas, they become the prioritized research focus areas of CSAR. Therefore, 37 labs, we just classify them under eight different themes. Okay. So one is aerospace, mm. electronics and the instrumentation. This is one theme. Second one is civil and the infrastructure. Mm. Agri, bio, nutritech, mm. energy, energy means both conventional as well as renewable, renewable energy. The other one is E3OW, meaning is ecology, environment, oceanography mm. and the 4M, meaning is mining, metals, materials and minerals, mm. healthcare. Therefore, we have not left anything yes. and the eighth one is chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, all the eight themes are taking care of the research focus areas and the deliverables 
of CSAR for its complete bandwidth. I would say this is a golden period for science and technology and Indian researchers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in the past one decade, not only the government, but also the national leadership made the country and all the citizens to believe, understand and realize that science alone can help them Absolutely. to get any kind of improvement and development in the coming days. And for the kind of support that we get hmm. in terms of whether it is funding our infrastructure or our processing, hmm. everything is just giving us a kind of an encouragement by means of which if you just see our research publications, the graph is going up and up mm. because now people started choosing science as their career. Yes. The population that is getting attracted towards science is really going up and up. And everybody is now made to think in a very, very focused manner. Right. Man. We just make them to understand that, hey, you are not here just to, to do whatever you want to do. Yes. You have to do what is required for the yes. country, what is required for the society. What is required for the entire globe, I would say. Absolutely. Because today anything is happening to any country. It is not his botheration or yes. that country's botheration. This is a botheration for the entire globe. Absolutely. If a natural disaster come, takes place in one place, it is not the problem of that place. Mm. Its impact, its yes. consequences, everything will be felt by the globe. Therefore, we feel that whatever I do in the form of science, be it in the form of publications or in the form of a technology, technology lead or its market reach, we make sure that my science, my technology package should find its application and relevance not only in Indian market, not only for its acceptance in India, but for the acceptance in the global arena. Absolutely, ma'am. Can you tell our listeners about the agreements or arrangements that CSIR has with foreign institutions so far as research is concerned? I think this is the very, very relevant question. The moment we talk mm -hmm. about the global arena, by sitting in one place, no, yes. you cannot simply do everything by yes. sitting in India. Mm -hmm. Therefore, building networks, mm -hmm. getting yourself connected with the international working mm -hmm. groups is very, very important. We encourage our scientists to visit other laboratories, other countries on exchange mode. And we allow them, we encourage them, motivate them, to apply for international fellowships, scholarships, exchange visits and deputation for short term and for long term also. So our scientists, they go over there, stay over there, learn many things and sharing the knowledge base, learn many things, come back to India, then strengthen whatever is happening in India. So this kind of an exchange and uh, the mutually supporting each other is happening in these days. Starting from research scholar, young scientist, mid-career scientist and the topmost level leadership scientist also. That's wonderful. Everyone knows that India is now recognized as a tech superpower. What are the areas that uh, India needs to focus on to remain a global leader in uh, cutting edge technology? I would say this is the most relevant question as far as the current uh, scenario is mm. concerned. I fondly used to tell my young friends, 20th century was not in the favor of India, but mm. 21st century is the century mm. for India by India. The days are not so far off that India is going to make it true. Therefore, as I already told you, if at all you want to get appreciated across the globe, you can do it only through science and technology. Yes. And we also have number of deep tech initiatives. Mm. Mm. The common one, I would say AI and ML. Yes. Mm. I think days are no, not so far off. Mm. We will also start believing that I mm. cannot live without AI and ML. Mm -hmm. Because these days we are telling, just 10 years back we said that we cannot, life without computer, mm -hmm. one cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. Today, life without mobile phone, yes. one cannot imagine. Absolutely. You and yeah. I will get suffocation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Of without course. mobile. Mm -hmm. Youngsters can't even think about uh, some time, mm -hmm. even few minutes without mobile phone. It, mm -hmm. I used to say it is an inseparable ornament. Yes, ma'am. Completely agree to what you say. Similarly, today. maybe in the coming days, mm -hmm. AI and ML. That is going to be an indispensable tool mm -hmm. and we are at that point. And India is also giving importance. Mm -hmm. We from CSAR, we are also uh, giving importance to that. Next one is green technologies. Yes. When we talk about the sustainability, I think these green technologies are very, very important. Country has seen number of revolutions. Yes. Especially after industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. We have seen growth. Mm -hmm. We have seen development. Mm -hmm. 
but on the other side undesirable some amount of attention seeking some disposal is also there absolutely and therefore is it not my responsibility yeah it's to take care of it ah uh, it's a collective responsibility therefore mm. Mm. we have taken that kind of responsibility and commitment into our account yes and we mm. have made it as a point that we will work for sustainable technologies and especially in terms of circular economy and waste to waste yes. mm. i used to throw this question to my mm. uh, young friends mm. tell me what is the biggest number mm. they will try to say 9999 i said to stop zero is the biggest number not just because zero is we can even take ownership of zero yes, of by, as indians mm. not because mm. of that mm. nowadays achieving zero is the most difficult job Absolutely. in terms of net zero therefore green yes, technologies sir. alone can help you yes. to get this net zero ma'am uh, india uh, has emerged as a hub of innovation that is another thing which the honorable prime minister has always focused upon our core strength innovation startup and high end technology earlier 15 20 years back we saw how for a cryogenic engine yeah. what kind of uh, problems india faced but yes. thanks to our scientific community india could overcome that yes. and just last year we landed on the moon the chandrayaan 3 landed soft landing, landed, soft landing. <laughs> and for the first time at the lunar south pole yes. so how do you see this and what does the future hold for india i may sound a bit repetitive but these are you know the positives that we have seen yes. especially in the last one decade uh, i think i would say uh, we are now getting ourselves positioned hmm. in the right way just because the government of india started giving importance to startups yes we are no longer sitting mm. only in the laboratory yes we started moving from lab to land mm. now our travel is land to brand yes marketing brand yes so in this second translational or transformational travel mm. who is going to hand hold us it is only the startup or entrepreneur or msme or the industry yes absolutely. of which startups startup the word itself is very nice word i would say is a hot keyword you are first giving your technology to a startup mm. and you help them to get initiated with mm. how many startups remain as sustainable startups mm. you are talking about sustainable technologies mm. do you make sure that your startups are also remaining as sustainable startups yes. therefore these days we understand by way of coming up with sustainable technologies i do agree with you and others maybe the listeners will also be having this kind of a question i can read the mind voice mm. technology is no technology is now long lived yes technology is such short lived yes it's always this is evolving. one of the challenge yes but i would mm. say the same challenge is the opportunity mm. we know very well that technologies are fast changing mm. therefore how best you can come up with a technology which is robust by itself mm. and which is giving you options for its further expansion True. and extension to accommodate a larger bandwidth for its multifaceted applications absolutely so in that case we come up with a kind of a technology with larger scope with larger duration larger acceptance and this is how we make sure that startups remain sustainable startups mm. and these are not so far off i would also like to know from you the recent activities of csir recently we came up with a success story with respect to hansa ng Mm. because we got the flying certificate mm-hmm. meaning is hansa ng is the complete indigenized version it's a hobby flying aircraft it's a sports aircraft even pilot training can also be given in that aircraft Wonderful. it's a two seater aircraft okay. it is hansa ng next mm-hmm. gen and we got the flying uh, certificate that mm-hmm. is a huge success absolutely and credit goes to our uh, nal national aerospace laboratory situated mm-hmm. in bangalore mm-hmm. karnataka then just two weeks back mm. they came up with a very successful demonstration of haps mm-hmm. meaning is high altitude pseudo satellite mm-hmm. and one of the newspapers mm. they also gave a very catchy title mm. high in the sky there is a next gen i wonderful meaning is it's a floating mm. body it acts like a next gen i or a third i from an altitude from a mm. height mm. of 3 meters 5 meters you can think about even 15 meters okay. we have gone mm. only up to 3 to 5 meters right mm-hmm. at this point of time but you can go up to even 15 meters okay. from that particular height you can visualize earth 
as well as ocean meaning is surveillance mm. data collection drone is also a floating body mm. that is also remotely operated mm. but drones only for few minutes yes. here mm. you can think about 8 hours to 24 hours so mm. one third 8 hours we mm. have successfully demonstrated okay the target is 24 hours mm. so recently i had an opportunity to uh, inaugurate this sea bot meaning mm. is underwater robotic mm-hmm. surveillance again okay. surveillance okay. so underwater world is an amazing world mm. for me it is only i just uh, witnessed mm. but for a researcher mm. the data about the coral life mm. coral reef csir laboratory mm. in uh, goa nio national institute mm. of oceanography Mm. they have recently successfully demonstrated transplantation of coral reef from one place to another place oh that's wonderful just to mm. make sure that the marine environment is also fulfilling the requirements for the marine ecosystem yes. in wherever you want to do that mm. therefore such kind of a underwater robot mm. unmanned robot mm. so this is able to spend a lot of time mm. it can take 360 degrees view of the coral reef and it can stay inside this water for us together days mm. together so depending upon your programming mm. you can get the data mm. photographs also if you keep the sensor you will get only the data mm. but this will give you even photographs okay. but 360 degrees you know because mm. all the sensors are kept within mm. the seabot mm. and it's a beautiful beautiful experience mm. and this is one of the accomplishments i would mm. say i just mm. want to make one yes, thing please, please. the honorable prime minister's vision is to mm. increase the the farmers income yes to the tune of at least two times we started with uh, two three very important missions aroma mm. mission and floriculture mission mm. and honey mission or the mm. very very important missions mm. and this aroma mission has proved mm-hmm. that in jammu the startups are more and their life and their mm. income has increased more than 2.5 times this is a success story this is wonderful ma'am uh, as we conclude nowadays uh, there's a lot of talk about social responsibility of scientists what does it mean and how useful can it be in solving the country's problems i think this is the last question but uh, the very very important and interesting question as i already told you any problem is not a problem to an individual or to any country it's a global problem therefore yes. whether it is waste to wealth or uh, carbon credit reducing mm. the carbon or whether it is a green technology or for self reliance i think everywhere indian science and technology it has to be celebrated in a big way and we are there from csir right to ma'am. ensure that indian science and technology without disappointing any citizen of the country will fulfill their requirements in the coming days That's a wonderful report ma'am and so reassuring to hear. Uh, first of all on behalf of uh, my producer and uh, Akashwani network we thank you for sparing your valuable time and uh, talking to us on this very important national science day. Once again thank you ma'am for joining us in the studios of Akashwani. Thank you very much Kaushik and thanks to Akashwani. Namaskar.